I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Now, we are thankful to Almighty God that he have allowed us over the past 17 years to work on his behalf. And as I have explained to you, trust in the Lord. Well, faith is when you ask Almighty God to do something for you and he does it. And that's good. You need faith. Well, you need to have some faith if you need things done for you. But trust, which is a bit more or less an Old Testament type of a spiritual weapon and a mighty weapon it is, by the way. And so is faith. But trust is when the Lord asks you to do something for him. And you will see it through. You'll do it for him. And I think one of the greatest representations of trust is Job. When Job, the Lord did not talk to Job directly. The Lord told the devil that Job was is a stand up man no matter what you throw at him. Job, you can throw, you can take his money. You can take his children. You can even take Miss Job if you want. But Job is a stand-up man. Job will not turn his back. Job will, Job will continue to glorify me. God told the devil that. The devil said that's a lie. But I don't know if the devil told God, called God a lie. I don't know, but you know what I mean. The devil's a liar himself. I don't know if he called God a liar. He didn't believe God, so he went down there and he troubled Job. And he took all the things from him that Job had gotten. And Job said, naked that came out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. The Lord gave. The Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord and hallelujah. And boom shakalaka. I don't know if Job knew about boom shakalaka. What do you think? You think Job knew about boom shakalaka? I know he knew about hallelujah. But Job said, the naked came out of my mother's womb and I'm going back the same way. I didn't have it when I got here. And I ain't taking nothing with me when I leave. Job's a stand up trust in the Lord. So the Lord asked me 17 years ago and the ministry was growing fine. I mean, we were doing good and everything had been wonderful. I'd been preaching several years, nearly 30 years, I think, something like that. Maybe not that many years, but 25 years or so. And the Lord asked me to stand up for him, that the son of Satan was coming in the name of Barack Hussein, the long legged Mac Daddy Obama, and God wanted me to take a stand. And he positioned me. I was, um, and so now we're at the point where I want to call this message, I am walking on water. That's right. The Lord has elevated the teaching from it's time to go higher to now the Lord has got me seeing it, saying to you, I am walking on water. And I'm going to teach every last member of the Outlaw World Missionary Church how to walk on water. I think the youngest member of the Outlaw Church is two babies named Juliet and what's the other name? Roliet. What's the other baby name? Juliet and not Nicolette. Yeah, they're the youngest babies. I'm going to teach them how to walk on water. Yeah, remember, I'm not walking. Pastor Manning is not walking on water. So I'm going to teach the young baby. There's another young baby in our church. Her name is Emerald Rose. Well, I'm going to teach Emerald Rose. She likes to walk down the aisle and sashay at everybody, waving hands it, like she's some queen or something. I'm going to teach Emma Rose how to walk on water. So now, listen, my friends, the, the Lord has elevated this ministry to the point where I can now teach you over the past 17 years of trusting in the Lord. And my trust in the Lord is to do, to do an assignment for him when he, 17 years ago he called me out. And now I am at the level where I've gotten out of the boat. I've gotten out of the denominational boat. I've gotten out of the racial boat. I've gotten out of the economic boat. I've gotten out of the political boat. I've gotten out of the theological boat. I've gotten out of the religiosity boat. I've gotten out of the Christianity boat. I've gotten out of the boat like Peter did that night when Jesus came walking on the water. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water. And he left all the disciples, left all their family, left all his friends. He left everybody in the boat. Well, I'm now walking on water, and it's now my job. Listen to me, everybody. Please listen to Pastor Manning. It is my assignment now to teach you how to walk on water, to go meet Jesus. Now, I'm going to read from uh, 
uh, uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, I think it is. Uh, I'm going to read that shortly, but let me say this to you. Let me bring the summation to the whole thing. We are now called by Almighty God to prepare a place for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That this church, that Atla is a womb for the return, uh, metaphorically, for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to me very carefully. I want to teach you how to walk on water. I want you to I want to teach you how to walk on water. Amen. I want to teach you how to get out the boat, how to get out the family boat. Yeah, that's right. You got to get out the boat if you're going to walk on water. You can't walk on water by staying in the boat. You got to get out the family boat. You got to get out the religiosity boat. You got to get out the denominational boat. You got to get out the racial boat. You got to get out the economic boat. You got to get out the political boat. You got to get out the boat and you got to walk. And I'm going to teach you how to walk on water. The purpose of your walking on water is we need to go and meet Jesus. Well, we need to meet Jesus when he returns. Now, I'm going to tell you in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, I'll read it in about a half an hour from now. That what happened with Jesus is similar to, in Matthew 14, is similar to the return, first the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ after the crucifixion and the resurrection. And then, of course, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. What happened in Matthew 14 is that Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side of the of the Galilean Sea. Now, these boys knew that sea well. They had been fishing that sea since they were little boys themselves, fishing out there with their daddy, so they knew that sea, but it was at night. And the Bible says that the wind was boisterous and it was tossing the boat back and forward. But Jesus went up on a mountain apart to pray. And then after Jesus finished praying, he came down off the mount and began to walk on water to where they were in the boat. Now, let me show you the similarities that you need to hear the similarities. Elder Butler, Elder Butler, you need to hear the similarities of this. You see, when Jesus ascended, now he's coming back. It's as if Jesus went away 2,000 years ago to pray, but now he's coming back. Now he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to be in the dark of night. And when he comes back, he's going to be walking on air. That's right. When he comes back, he's going to be walking on air. And I'm going to walk on air to meet Jesus right here in Atla when he comes back. I'm going to walk barefoot on air when Jesus comes back. Now, the other disciples stayed in the boat. That don't make them bad people. That don't make them bad people. I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing anybody here, but only Peter got out the boat. And I want to tell you right now, from this day forward, when you see James David Mann and when you see me, I am walking on water. I am out of the boat. Well, the truth of the matter is, my friend, is that God, uh, Elder Smith, if you're listening to Elder Smith, I don't know if you're listening, maybe your wife Deborah will tell you. But I am, since, since the Lord spoke to me back in 1976, he didn't tell me in 1976 that in the year 2024 that I would reach a level of preaching of walking on water. He didn't tell me all of that. No, he didn't tell me all of that. But he put it all in me. And so as the ministry goes forward, he didn't tell me that back in 1976 that I would be called by him to prepare a place for Jesus to return to. And in the process, the people that will be pre preparing the place for Jesus to return to will be trained how to walk on water. He didn't tell me that. But I got out the boat, Elder Smith. I got out the boat years ago. I got out the racial boat. I got out the family boat. I got out the denominational boat. I got out the boat. Years ago, so everybody, everybody wondered, what happened to Pastor Manning? We saw him on television. We saw him on the Word Network. We saw him on BT. We heard him on the radio. We heard him on the Salem Radio Network. Well, what happened to Pastor Manning? And what, 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 he's nice talking against the black, so-called black president. Well, what happened? I got out the boat. I said, I got out the boat. 
I think very fondly of my friends and mentors at the Baptist Ministers Conference of US of New York City and vicinity. I think very fondly of them, of the Baptist pastors that trained me, that, that helped me, that taught me, that ordained me. I think very fondly of them, but I got out the boat. I said, I got out the boat and I'm walking on water. I got out the boat. I got out that boat. I got out that Baptist boat. I got out of it. I got out that family boat. I got out of it. And now my job is to teach you how to walk on water. Because what we're doing right now is preparing a place for the Lord Jesus Christ to return to. You know, John the Baptizer had this unique responsibility of being a forerunner before the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I don't I talk to Elder LaFleur maybe and find out that we'll see what happened. But, you know, uh, the Catholics have a, a belief in the angels and the saints that can assist them. That's what the Catholics have. They have that, that ideal. And so I would want to ask, maybe Elder LaFleur will confer with me on this. Do you think, do you think that since Elder, the generous servant, Hartfield, departed, that God has released the revelations that we have been unearthing over the past few months, that those revelations are not without the assistance of the forerunner, the generous servant, Elder Hartfield. Now, this, I know that's a Catholic doc. I know the Catholic pray to St. Jude. I know they pray to, you know, the Mary the Immaculate. And I know they pray to St. Joseph. And I know all of that. I know all of that. I know that. I understand that. And perhaps some of the doctrine that the Catholics have used, uh, Martin Luther didn't take it with him when he, back in 1526 when he pulled out of the Catholic Church and started the Lutheran and then the Protestant movement. But something is happening, that's what I'm trying to say. There's something going on. And uh, perchance, the uh, elder generous spirit Hartfield may have had something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe the church members can pray and talk about it. But I'll say this, also Elder Smith, I'll come back to you once again, then I won't bother you any further. And that is this, when Pastor Bartolotta came to this church, he was the first, he was the first to bring a large trough of Japheth people. Well, we had over a thousand Japheth people join our church after Pastor Bartolotta came. Elder Smith, are you out there listening to me? Let me stop calling people's names. Elder, Pastor Bartolotta, pathway to God ministry, brought all the more than 1,000 members that joined this church that were Japheth, he led the way. He created the pathway to this church. Pastor Bartolotta created the pathway to this church. You follow what I'm saying? And so now we're at the point where the Lord has revealed to me but the Lord has revealed to me that what I have been doing, I got out the boat years ago. I got out the boat. It's been over 35 years I got out the boat, or maybe a little less. And I'm walking on water. I didn't even know I was walking on water until the Lord just revealed it the other day. I know I got out the boat. I know I left all my brothers, my, my pastoral brother. I know I left them all in the boat. I left the denomination, I left all that denominational talk, I left it, in, I got out the boat and left them there. I did, and m many ways, there's a young boy in this church named Kingsley, and I think he's four or five years old, I don't know how Kingsley is, maybe seven years old, I don't know. His name is Kingsley. So he was in my house the other day, he's seven years old, I think, and he said, Pastor Manning, do you have a friend? <laughs> I thought that's a curious question for a seven-year-old to ask anybody. He said, do you have a friend, Pastor Manning? 
I said, well, why do you want to know? He said, because I want to take a picture of you and your friend together. Now, the, the point of it is here that there's not a whole lot of people that want to be my friend. I got out the boat. I got out the boat. If you want to understand Dr. Lee Johnson down in Florida, if you want to understand Pastor Manning, I got out the boat. I got out the boat. I'm walking on water. Now, I'm not here bragging about myself. I'm just setting the template now because I need to teach every last one of y'all how to walk on water. We're ready to go higher. We're ready to go higher. Now, we have been at some great levels in this ministry. God knows we have, but we're not ready to go higher. We're not ready to walk on water. Are you ready to walk on water with me? All right, Mr. Engineer, I'm going to ask you to bring up the event in the Bible in Matthew's gospel where it all took place, the place where it happened. Are you ready? Let me ask you one more time. Are you ready? I know there, there are constraints. There, the, perhaps you're in the boat with a whole lot of religious people right now. You're in the, in, the, in the boat with the choir church. You're in the boat with the you know, testimony church, you're in the boat with all of that, you're in the boat with the prosperity church, maybe you're in the boat with a false prophet church, maybe you're in that boat now. Are you ready to get out the boat? Are you ready to get out the boat, stop going to church to dance and sing because you ain't got enough, you, you think you're being holy by not going to the nightclubs and the hoochie-coochie joints, the juke joints, you don't go to them no more, so you go to church and you're dancing hoochie-coo in the church. The choir sing, everybody throw off their wigs and everybody jump up and down. It ain't nothing but a hoochie coochie. Are you ready to get out the boat? Are you ready to get out the boat? Are you ready to let me teach you how to walk on water? Because that's the only way we're going to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to get out the boat. So I'm going to ask the engineer if he'd bring up the verses where this event took place initially back in the Gospel of Matthew, back in the day of Jesus. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get on a ship. He told them to get in it and to go before him unto the other side. And while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of, now Jesus was, let me back up, Mr. Engineer, back that up for just a second. Are you ready to learn how to walk on water? Now we've learned how to, how to find the Holy Ghost. We've learned how to fast. I've taught you how to fast. I've taught you how to pray. I've taught you how to supplicate. I've taught you how to hear from the Holy Ghost. I've taught you how to walk in power. I've taught you how to have faith. But are you now ready to learn how to walk on water? It's time to go higher. It's time to go. The good Pastor Manning, that's me. I've taught you all these things. Those of you who've been with me over the years, and some of y'all are just coming on board, well, praise God for that. But I've taught over the years, I've taught the Bible up and down the Old Testament, the New Testament, all up and down and all the various, if you will, teachings about the Bible, the extra biblical writings. I've taught you about the astronomy. I've told you about the astrophysics. I've, I've taught you all of that. Are you now ready to be taught how to walk on water? And when he had sent multitudes away, he went up into a mountain. Now, Jesus went up into a mountain just the same way he went when he went back to heaven. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, that's the oblation hour, I'll teach you about the fourth, the first watch, the second watch, the third watch, and the fourth watch. I'll teach you about that, but not now. But I've taught you about the watches. I've taught you about the Jewish timekeeping process. I've taught you all of that. Today, I'm teaching you, or we're starting the process of learning how to walk on water. This process could take a few years. It takes children some time to learn how to walk. 
and I'm going to teach you how to walk on water. But right now, basically all you got to do is just follow me. Follow me because I've gotten out the boat. I'm out of the boat. All you got to do is follow me and you will walk on water. I've gotten that Pastor Manny is out of the boat. You want to understand, you want to understand Pastor Manning, you want to understand what Pastor Manning is doing, then you need to understand he's out of the boat. He ain't in the boat. He got out the boat. He's walking on water, if you want to understand me. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a spirit. And they cried out for fear. All these men, that's, that's what happened in these churches. They don't, under, they wouldn't recognize. Let me tell you something. You can go in these, these domes and these mega churches. And if Jesus ever walked in there, they'd all run out. <laughs> if Jesus ever walked into one of these churches, one of these mega churches, and these little teeny, teeny weeny churches too, if Jesus ever walked in there, they'd all run out. They don't know who he is. They don't know who he is. They don't know Jesus. If you walked in this church, if you walked in the, that church down there with Joel Osteen, and everybody would run out of there in a heartbeat. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, now, this is his faith. Bid me come unto thee on the water. Now, let me ask you a question. Leave that right there, Mr. Engineer. Let me ask you a question. Would you have asked that question of, of Jesus? Now, Peter, Peter qualified his question with the preposition if, if my English is right, Esther Bennett. Peter qualified that question by saying, if it's you, now if it ain't you, I don't know what we're going to do. But Peter said, if it's you or if it be thou, if it's you, Jesus, tell me to get out the boat. Tell me to get out the boat if it's you. Tell me to get out the boat. Well, I have to tell you that the night that Jesus came to me, it was at night, in that jail cell, there at the Brooklyn House of Detention, it was Jesus. I knew it was him when he came to me that night. And he walked right through those bars. He walked right through that wall. He walked right into my jail cell. I knew it was him. I knew it was him. But I want to ask you a question. If you had been in that boat that night and been one of the disciples of Jesus, would you have asked him that question? If it's you, Lord. Now, I don't, Peter said, I don't know if it's you or not, but if it's you, then tell me to come walk to you on the water. First of all, the question has a question of its own, because if Jesus is coming to them, why go out to meet him? You understand? Now, all of this is important that we raise these questions because I want to teach you how to walk on the water. Basically, all you got to do to walk on water is just follow me. But let me, let me, let me, let me preface that. Basically, all you, you got to get out the religious boat. You got to get out the family boat. Yeah, you do. You got to get out the boat. You got to get out the boat. And you cannot be afraid of the power of God. You can't be afraid of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You, get, you got to get out the boat and you can't be afraid of the power of God. And, and, and by, when you get out the boat and you're not afraid of the power of God, you're going to walk on water. I got out, what was that, 30 some years ago, I got out the boat. I got out the boat and my, all my pastor or friends was wondering, well, what's happening to him? All my classmates and from my alma mater, well, what's happening to Manning? Why is he throwing away such great opportunities? Why is he throwing away such a great career? I got out the boat. I got out the boat. My family members, mothers, sisters, and everybody, what's wrong with him? I got out the boat. I'm walking on water. 
I'm walking on water. I got out the boat. And I want to teach you how to do the same thing. I want to teach you how to, how to get out the boat. You got to get out that family boat. You got to get out that denominational boat. You got to get out that Black Lives Matter boat. You got to get out that MAGA boat. You got to get out the boat. So Peter asked the question. He said, Lord, if it's you, then tell me to come to you. And he, being Jesus, said, come. That's all he said. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. When Peter was come down out of that ship, put his foot over the side of that ship, put the other foot over the side of that ship, and stepped on the water. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. He put his foot outside that ship and stepped on the water. He stepped on the water to go to Jesus. <laughs> and he was walking. He was walking. Now, I'm going to let this verse 30, when he, the wind began to boss and Peter began to sing, cry and save me, Lord. I'll come back to that later. Mr. Engineer, you can drop that for time. I'll come back to that later. But yes. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. Yes, my brothers and my sisters. The time has now come that the Lord has allowed me to now recognize I got out the boat. And he's now called and telling me to tell you, get out the boat. And the purpose is this is not without purpose or meaning that I got out the boat. It's not without purpose or meaning that you're going to teach you how to walk on water. It's not without purpose or meaning. The ultimate purpose is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's back up a few steps here now, because the other item is, is that trust is when the Lord asks you to do something for him. The Lord has asked me to prepare a place for him. And, and I'm preparing Atla for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm preparing a place for him to return to. He's not returning to the Gaza Strip. He's not returning to Jerusalem City, Jerusalem and Israel. He told you to flee there. I'm preparing. He's asked me to prepare a place for him. Now, and then 17 years ago, he emphatically put me in a position now to challenge all political and religious ideals. 17 years ago, the Lord then elevated me to challenge all political ideas and to challenge all religious ideas, all of them, and call them all false. Call them all false and recognize that the devil has come. And so I'm not walking on the water. And for the past 17 years, I've trusted the Lord. There's been some, I'll tell you, it's been some really tough time. Well, not, I don't know if I want to say tough time, but it's been some really, well, unusual times that I've gone through the past 17 years. But I'm still here, and it's getting better. It's getting better. Now, I said that Pastor John Bottolotta helped lead over 1,000 Japheth people to become bona fide, certified, name card-carrying members of the Outlaw World Missionary Church, not the Bethelite Church. It's very important. Scribe Lewis, Scribe LaFleur, Scribe LaFleur. It's very important. You wouldn't know about the Bethelite Church. But Pastor John Bartolotta led over a thousand Japheth people to become card carrying, signing their name, members of the Atla World Missionary Church, not the Bethelite Church. Not the Bethelite Church. Not the Bethelite Church. Elder Butler, the Bethelite Church, they were, they were you know, I think Bethelite Church had like three or four different choirs, a junior choir, senior choir. A not so senior choir. <laughs> uh, they'd all get together on once a year at the anniversary, and they'd all maybe be, they'd be four or five members or ten members in one of those groups, and they'd raise maybe three hundred dollars after a year of working selling chicken dinners. That was the Bethelite Church, the choirs, the Bethelite Church, the Bethelite Church. But then God changed the name to Atla. <laughs> yeah, 
and all the choirs and all the fundraising, and all the chicken, the rubber chicken, and all the selling of the chitlins and everything, all that went down the drain. I got out the boat. I said I got out the boat and began to sell that ship called Atla. Well, walk on the water called Atla, let me put it that way. So it is not without purpose that Almighty God has called us. Now, I want to teach you how. Will you let me teach you how? You say, well, Pastor Man, I want to walk on water too. This is not something that benefits you. This is not, in, 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 a, in a, if you will, in a false prophet or prosperity church way. This is not a Joyce Meyer teaching, who is a false prophetess. But this is something that we're doing for Jesus. I've taught this many years ago. Scribe Lewis, Scribe Lewis, Scribe LaFleur. I taught this many years ago. That when John the Baptizer realized that Almighty God had called him as a forerunner to prepare the way of the preaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great ministry, and including the, the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection. When John realized that, though he was living in the boat or living in the house with his father, Zacharias, who was a priest, he was living in the house with his father, Zacharias, who was a priest, and his mother, Elizabeth, who was a holy woman that had given a, 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 a miraculous birth. But listen to me, Atla. Listen to me far and wide. Listen to me. Listen to me, every word I say. When John the baptizer realized that he had been called to be the forerunner, to baptize the Lord Jesus Christ, to prepare the way, to make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain, exalt the valleys and bring down the hills. When John the baptizer realized that he got out of his father's house and he went and he lived out in the wilderness with a group called the Essenes. We'll talk about them later. They're not important right now. The Bible says his, his clothing was leather girdle and camel's hair. And his meat was locust and wild honey. He got out the boat. I said, John the baptizer got out the boat. He got out the family boat. He could have been assistant priest to his father. He got out the religious boat. He got out the boat. He got out the boat. He got out the, John the baptizer went into the wilderness all by himself. Like I got out the boat. James David Manning, I got out the boat. I got out the religiosity boat. I got out the family boat. I got out the boat. John got out the boat. He got out of his father's house. The Bible says he went out into the wilderness alone. Everybody thought he dressed funny, wearing camel's hair and a leather girdle about his head. Well, the truth of the matter is, I got a camel's hair overcoat. Them things ain't cheap. <laughs> no, and it's beautiful, that camel's hair. That thing is beautiful. And a leather girdle? <laughs> Was it Versace? I don't know, leather. So maybe it wasn't so bad I thought. And the Bible said John had a strange diet. Camels has and leather what he wore, and he ate locusts. That must be some sort of specialty meal. Locusts and wild honey. He must have been a healthy man. John, John was probably pretty healthy. You see, my friends, does it, is it plain now? Is it, is it clear? I've included these verses. And I've included the, the, the John got out the boat, Peter got out the boat, James David Manning has gotten out the boat. That's, that's what has happened to me, if you want to know. I'm not getting back in that boat. I'm not going back to the choir ministry. I'm not going back there. Let me say something to you, brother pastors. Let me say something to you. I got out the choir. I just, it was just 
tiresome watching them march up there every worship service. They all march up there in their robe, then they all turn around, half of them mad with each other. And I got rid of that. First of all, it wasn't inspirational at all and wasn't what the Lord was calling for. And we had a, a woman in our church, and uh, I forget her name now, played the organ, charged us $175 a Sunday. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And then she left, we got another one. He wanted money every Sunday too. Then we got another one who came in drunk. I said, this, ain't, this, this just ain't working. <laughs> I'm looking at this. I got to deal with all this nonsense before I preach. What was that woman's name? Sarah McLawla. Yeah. <laughs> before her, there was one named Annie Thompson. And they're the choir members. You got to deal with all this before you get up to preach God's word. The, this choir done spread all kind of mammon all over the place, done spit up the place and nasted up the place. The choir members up there, and now you got to get up and preach after all that mess. So we know this got to go. No, know this has got to go. And lo and behold, God sent us some of the most talented musicians, the most talented singers. There we get a, a song or two here and there. We even got Minister Honecker down in Louisiana. I hear his voice coming across our, our social platform with the Rumble, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I hear Minister Honecker's voice coming across uh, our platforms every Saturday morning. I hear that man's voice. I say they play him all the time. And by the way, the other thing is this is that, you know, you say, well, that ain't quiet. That ain't kind of music when the black people use. Listen, listen, this is not a black church. Let's get something straight, all right? Let's get something straight. This church is not a black church where everything is all boogie-woogie. No, this ain't no black church. No. Minister Honecker's music is accepted on a large sloth of our membership. This ain't no black church. Don't be calling me no black church. Black music? Where's that gospel music? Won't that gospel? We're looking for the gospel. No, this ain't no black church. But let me tell you this. Brother Pastor, can I say this to you? I got out the boat. But the Lord has sent some musicians in this church. I do declare every time they sing a song or perform a song, it, 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 I'll tell you, I don't, I don't know what to do. There's a, there's a song, and maybe we can play it at the end of this, this now, where... Uh, uh, Rachel LaFleur and uh, Dr. Hartfield. I don't even know the name of the song. Good Lord have mercy. I'll tell you that you ain't never heard nothing like that. Sandy Patty will have to sit down and take out a notepad. No, mm -mm, no, Lord have mercy. When I got rid of that choir, all that mess up there, getting rid of that, all these musicians want to charge us money. And the Lord just brought us, just brought us a beautiful, we have a beautiful music department. Now, it is, be, it is about as beautiful as you can, everybody's singing so wonderful. And it's not a choir, man. Everybody just get up and you're like, somebody get up and sing a song and sit down and then they leave the door open for me to preach. But all that, all that, all that mess going on. I got out the boat. I said, I got out the boat. And, um, I thank God that he let me get out the boat. And so now I want to teach you how to walk on water. Is that okay with you? I, many of you have allowed me to teach you a lot of things. When you came here, you didn't know very much about anything. You didn't know very much about anything. But you've allowed me to teach you. And now, I'm going to, now the Lord is calling me to teach you how to walk on water. Now I have to tell you, let's go back to John the Baptist. Peter got out the boat, right? John the baptizer got out. John the baptizer, that camel's hair might not have been so bad. The Bible says that the garment that Jesus wore was a pretty expensive garment too. So if you say, well, Pastor Man, I see you wearing all them fancy suits. Look at that thing you got on now. Well, I got on my jacket now, but I got on this fancy vest, yes. But understand that Jesus' garment was pretty nice as well. And uh, so that camel's hair might not have been such a bad thing that John was wearing. But he got out, he could have been assistant priest to his father, but he got out the boat. And he never went back to his father's house. Because his father was not called of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I mean, God, God used him to, get, to bring John, but that was the end of it after that. And so the Lord has called me to prepare a place for him. It's called Atla, the land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. When he comes back, we're going to walk in the air to meet him. I told y'all that once before. We're going to have to actually walk in the air to meet him. Paul says there's a verse in the Bible that says well, we should be caught up in the air to meet him. Yeah, but we got to walk there. You got to walk there. And you got to believe, it's, you got to know it's Jesus. And Paul talks about uh, I've been caught up in the air to meet him. You got to know it's Jesus the way Peter said, well, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And then if you, when, when Jesus comes, you will follow me as I walk on the air to meet Jesus because I'm walking on water now. And I believe that many of you are going to, going to get there. I, I know, I believe that you, we're going to get there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to teach you how to walk on from the youngest to the oldest. I think the youngest is either Nicolette or Juliet. And uh, the oldest is Mother Seals, Mother Shekinah. Mother Shekinah, I don't know if you're listening, but I, want to, I know you've been around for a while but I need to teach you how to walk on the water. And it's time for us to go higher. And I want to restate that I don't know, I don't have a word about this. I don't have a word about this from the Lord, uh, whether or not what has happened to our ministry in terms of the revelations that's been coming forth over the past few months, whether or not those revelations are somehow or another connected with the forerunner, uh, the generous servant, Elder Hartfield. I was watching his daughter sing. Uh, the voices in that woman. Well, I knew her grandfather. You don't know him, but I knew her, her grandfather. And the commitment that she has made. Sometimes I sit and I look at people like Jatira Butler and... Uh, Dr. Hartfield, and I look at some of these, these others, and I put so much into their lives. And Dr. Hartfield, though she has a doctorate degree, refuses to go out there in the world. She could go out there and she could be the head of New York City school system if she wanted. Her father worked in the school system for years. She's ch not chosen that path. And when she sings, it's like silk milk. When she opens her mouth and sings, it's like silk milk. You're going to hear her in just a few moments. And then she gets backed up by Sabbath Rachel. So, Atla, let's give God praise today that we've now discovered after the 17 years of my teaching trust in the Lord is that I got out the boat and I'm now able to articulate this. I could not have articulated this. To, I mean, I could have. All things are possible through Almighty God. All things are possible through Jesus. We know that. And, but I could not have articulated this. I, well, it, this, this message today is time release. Though it was implanted me, implanted in me back in 1976, it was time to be released. Well, yeah, actually, I started in the last lesson that we had together about Atla out the boat. Now, a trust in the Lord movement outlies out of the boat. And today, we're further demonstrating that I'm walking on water. These messages are time released. They've been in me since my new birth in that jail cell. I was born in a jail cell. That's where I was born. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> I was born in a jail cell on, on the seventh floor of the Brooklyn House of Detention. That's where I was born. And I got out the boat. Well, I don't know why he threw away that opportunity. The man was on, man was on BET television. You know how good that is? He was on the Word Network, and he just threw all that away. He's a graduate of Union Theological Seminary. That's a prestigious school. All the prestigious high rollers, like Senator Raphael Warnock down there in Georgia, now as a senator, all these people that... Graduate that school, all take high position. Why he take such a position of feeding hungry people and housing the homeless? Why'd he do that? I got out the boat. I got out the boat. 
I got out the boat, my friends. And so I wanted to be able to say that, and I hear, you say, well, Pastor Manning, I'm following you. Does that mean I'm walking on water? Or absolutely. If you're walking in my footsteps, now listen to me very carefully. If you're walking in my footsteps, if you're walking in my teaching, if you're the Sabbath day, you got to do that. The first fruit offering, you got to do that. The tithe, you can't rob God. You can't lie to God. You can't steal from God. You can't do that. If you're going to walk in my footsteps, then you're walking on water. Does that make sense to you? If you're walking in my footsteps, then you're walking on water. Because I'm walking on water. But you got to do the Sabbath day. You got to do the Sabbath day. And you got to get out the boat. You can't walk on water if you're in the boat. If you're in the family boat, if you're in the racial boat, if you're in the religiosity boat, if you're in the de de denominational boat, you can't walk on water in the boat. You can't walk on water in the boat. You got to get out the boat. You got to get out the boat. And then you got to follow me. As I follow the Lord Jesus Christ, as Jesus walks on water, so do I walk on water. I'm following him. I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's walking on water, and I'm walking on water. And if you're walking with me, you're walking on water. That's right. And greater and better days are coming, but I have to tell you, some turbulent, some dark and very disturbing days are coming. Some very dark and very disturbing days are coming, according to the tribulation. But that is a time when we shall shine. The days of the tribulation. Uh, Elizabeth gave me a note, I didn't read it, of another pastor stepping down. Everywhere you look, the Lord is bringing these pastors down. These big time, 100,000 members, 50,000, 40,000 members. It won't be long before all of them are coming down. Then we shall shine. Then people shall know the truth. There's only one sermon in the Bible. It's not prosperity. There's only one sermon in the Bible. It's called righteousness. And the apostle Paul said there's laid up for him a crown of righteousness to be given by the righteous judge. That's the only sermon. That's the only sermon in the Bible. That's what Jesus told John to baptize. He told John, baptize me because it's our responsibility to preach righteousness, not, baptism, not prosperity, not racism, not denominationalism. Not secretarianism. It's our responsibility to preach righteousness, John. And John got out the boat and baptized Jesus. John got out his father's house. You got to get out. You got to get out the boat. So what about my family? I love my children. I love everybody. Well, love them in hell. Love them in hell. Go ahead. Love them in hell. You get out the boat, they may decide to get out the boat to follow you. But right now, you're following them. you following your children, younger than you, crazier than you, and you're following them. You're staying with them rather than having them come with you. Get out the boat. Praise Almighty God. So I'm going to teach you, and I, I know I've said those things to you, but I would say most people that listening to me, they done got out the boat. They, if, you, if I'm following Jesus, and I am, now, I'm following Jesus, and you know that. Now, you may not like it, but I'm following Jesus. I'm following Jesus, and he's walking on the water. Well, if Jesus is walking on the water, then I'm walking on the water, and I've come to understand that now. past 17 years, God told me to trust him. And if you are following me, you're going to walk on the water. You're going to walk on the water.